it occurred to me that I should put out a video on how to make uh, hangman, hangman's knots, and then we can get people to translate it into different languages, just in case they try to run. The TSA, I think that's a brilliant idea, right? In it, because think about it: those uh, homeless people that are jacked off the streets in Japan, and that's what they're doing. They won't let the international community come in. They'll just jack homeless people off, send them on in there. And I thought it was brilliant how because these people might be terrorists. See. Don't underestimate a terrorist, because what he could do is he could get himself all radiated, eat radiation, start eating those rods, and then go off and get himself cremated, right? As soon as he gets out, take the $15 an hour he got, get a lawyer, get a will, and make sure to enforce it when he dies of the radiation poison a few days later. That's providing he don't eat the plutonium, he doesn't eat the uranium, he doesn't eat the strontium, he doesn't eat... He only eats the stuff with a half-life of eight days. We'll be okay. He can pull it off. But we need the TSA there because like, he's like a walking dirty bum. Everywhere he pees, everywhere he freaking poops. Think about it. Because he's, right? he's so radiated. They might not be victims after all. They might not be just the average homeless guy, see? They might be something more like Al-Qaeda. You know. The ones we created 5 million orphans for in Afghanistan to get those 11,000 supermen, terrors, terrors. That's why we got 20, 22 vets committing suicide on the streets every day because we're trying to get those 11,000 terrors. That's why we got 2 million widows now in Iraq to get those 11,000 terrors. Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, that is like the best excuse out there now. How come you're late for work? Well, I was listening to Al-Qaeda. They were talking about it on the radio. There's 300 of them left. Well, what we're going to do, we might have to get a world government and hunt those fuckers down. And I'm worried that some sharp-minded Al-Qaeda is going to dress himself up as a homeless person, right? Get some plastic surgery, get his eyes back there, and... Just act innocent on the street corner and the Yakuza's will come like what in the head. Drag him off to Fukushima, get his rads. He'll be laughing, he'll be stuffing his pockets. Radiation, big old chunks of radiation in his pockets. No one's going to follow him around either, see? But a determined Al-Qaeda terrorist, he could do that, see? That's real. That's real stuff, folks. I'm trying to keep a straight face. That's real... I can't do it anymore, sorry. I was I was going pretty good though for a while. Because I realized, you know, Al Qaeda might be watching this video. <laughs> and I'm giving them ideas, so I better shut my yap. Because what happens then? Are they going to take me over to Guantanamo Island and point out what I was thinking? You know, I think the TSA, we could use them just to shoot the seagulls that are landing at Fukushima so they're not up to there dropping all their dirty bombs all over Fukushima. Well, actually, I guess it doesn't matter. Fukushima is, the whole prefecture is a nuclear waste site. So is Tokyo. So is 70% of Japan. That's being coined, right? That was in the headlines yesterday. Professor, 70% of Japan is contaminated. No shit, Professor. <laughs> I like, that's gallows laugh again, folks. Because these people are prisoners, right? There's an internet blackout. There's martial law. And every time you hear the word, the word cesium-137, give your head a little scratch and say, what about uranium-234 and uranium-235 and strontium-90s? And they always give you these low-ball ones anyway. Ah, it's got a 30-year half-life. It's, like it's like a banana. It's like water. It's like radiation from the clouds when you're flying in a plane. Except this stuff will kill you. And because you're susceptible, because you have weak systems, because you're eating those GMO concoctions, drinking your GMO milk, because the cows are eating the grass, right? And we know the studies on breast cancer, and we know the studies on how the isotopes and the radiation, the beta 
emitters and how sequest how this isotopes get sequestered in your body, the heavy metals, how the damage is so vicious, because you have no resistance that maybe the TSA can um, can actually have a use, right? I mean, they got their badges through administration, not legislation. So this might make them feel like they're actually important. They can get down there and check and make sure Al Qaeda didn't slip on that site. They can get out and patrol amongst all those tanks where all those rods landed, right? That's what they're there for. I mean, sure, they hired them. Uh, they got most of them found their job uh, by looking at uh, coffee cups and pizza boxes, advertisements, because that's what they done. That's what the TESA actually physically done. They get the sharpest of the sharpest, the best of the best, the greatest of the greatest, and outfit them with plastic badges through legislation, or administration rather than legislation. So down there we can, because they're so brave, I think we should give them real badges. That's just my humble opinion. But... Consider that as a viable option. And so they can keep their eye on TEPCO and give them a hand to lock the gates and turn light switches on. And they can, you know, they can shuffle the homeless back and forth every day to the tanks. They're holding them into the cages to keep them in before they get their reds. Oh, oh Dana was a naughty boy again. I kicked off. That'll teach me. Don't talk about that shit no more. No, not I. So I was here waiting for the video to come up, and I start like dozing off in my chair. I just couldn't keep my eyes open, so I I got this solution. It works for me all the time, anyway. What I do is I get a great big bowl of ice cream and I eat that shit as fast as I can, and then I like hang on for about twenty seconds to the side of my head, and I actually don't like doze off after that and I just stick the ice cream whatever's left over back in the fridge because can't touch that again for a while don't want to go down that road for at least an hour till your brain hijacks you again but out of all the ice cream in the supermarket here only one's not GMO bastards how cruel what a cruel thing to do to a human species take away that one little tiny Thing and then make it jack. They jack your wallet. They get a little bucket of ice cream that allegedly has no GMO. Probably got full of pollen. I know, I'm going down to Yahoo land, didn't I? <coughs> That'll teach me to eat ice cream <laughs> like it's soup. <laughs> you know, the TSA could bring a lot to this program, right? Because they're organized. And sure, you know, most of them couldn't get a job at Walmart before this. And that's the same thing with the TEPCO executives. These are born into it in breeds and appointees. <coughs> and they're part of the military industrial complex. Right? That was a military industrial complex site. And the TSA is like the brown shirts and the Nazis, so they would fit right in with that particular establishment because that's based upon the dem democratic democracy models, right? And it's kind of funny, really, because a corporation usually go to jail um, because now, now they, when under a charter, you can cannibalize the corporation, sell all of its assets, and seize everything they got, and incarcerate. Uh, the criminals and we can't do man and uh, the kuzos like they'll be like i can't go through those gates every day they're groping me all over the place they're asking me do i have any kids where do we go to school is there any football games in the town they're always playing around with those rubber gloves and so the kuzos won't be able to deal with that and because the TSA has plastic badges, you use Kuzu's got to listen to them. See? Right? That makes sense? It was administration. You better respect that. Oh, my computer's going in a blah, blah. Trying to do a Luke Firewall update. Hang on. This could be scary. Uh, I kicked it off at the pass. Where was I? Right. So not only could the Kuzu's, I mean, I'm sorry, the TSA help flush out some of that Yakuza's, right, and get rid of some of their bad habits. 
they can keep tabs on uh, walking dirty bombs, right? Because Al Qaeda, they got all these resources there. Imagine they can, you know, they got Al Qaeda scared off anyway, right? There's 29,000 rapes every year in the military to get that 11,000 Taliban or Al Qaeda, whatever you want to call them. They got 900 bases worldwide to get that. 11,000 Taliban, there's 22,000 drone strikes since Obama been hitting the golf balls. And that was all to get that same 11,000 Taliban. There's uh, around 4 million Afghanistanis and, Af and Iraqis that are missing. Nobody knows where they're to. Because they're not in the refugee camps with the 5 million refugees that they created. The Americans and the British and everybody else created to get those 11,000 Taliban. We gotta have drones in Pakistan now, over and over and over, blowing up little villages and little huts full of women and children that haven't even seen a TV set to get that same 11,000 Taliban. And we put so much money in all these 900 bases, the TSA should have to go to those bases also and make sure Al Qaeda is not out there stealing any of that depleted uranium bullets they use. Because that could be used as a dirty bomb too, see? Right. We can export the TSA, I mean the brown shirts, I mean TSA, all over the world and bring order with their plastic badges. Because everybody respects a party plastic badge. Well, okay. Not much of that made any sense at all. Made more sense than everything I said in the last 30 or 40 days, probably. But I think the TSA, like, I think we like we all undervalue them just because they can't get a job at Walmart and just because their badges are true administration and not legislation, and just because they're not entitled to any law officers' health care benefits, and just because we don't give them any credit because they've never stopped a terrorist attack or identify the terrorists, uh, it just means that they're so good they could possibly, just a possibility, be able to stop one of those terrorists from dressing up as a homeless person, infiltrating Fukushima's uh, liquidator crew, because it's a suicide mission anyway. That's what they're famous for, boy. That's what they're famous for, I tell you. They don't care. <laughs> Boom! And so if they can go in and load up on the isotopes, come out, die shortly after, have a will that they can be cremated and release, liberate all those isotopes back into the environment for millions and billions of years, that's brilliant. That's friggin' brilliant. You can't tell me that's not brilliant. That, because Al-Qaeda has wrecked this planet and you don't think they would pull off a stunt like that? Is that what you're saying to me? You don't think Al-Qaeda after watching this video, I could work that out. Well, Mr. Computer, and everybody is watching me and scratching their head and wondering what the fuck they're doing here tonight. I apologize, because once in a while I snap, and uh, I think that was around 9 o'clock this morning. Hi, Charles. Hi, Albert. Hi, Lennon Morell. See, I can almost uh, stutter my way through that one. X-ray, uh, milk from cows and vermin, testing positive for radiation. Hi, Miss Milkity. Miss Milky, Miss A. Seen your comments. Hi, Magic. What's up? What's up? What's up? I watched your uh, video today. Nine, 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 nine. That was pretty funny, man. I like that. It looks like 666 when you're tilting your head back. That's what was my take on it anyway. Who knows, right? I miss things sometimes because my yeah, one of my eyes actually go that way and that way. So, but whenever I look at a camera, they stay straight. So that's why I always sit in front of these cameras because it's pretty cool. I can see it in a, it's like a mirror. I know. Shut up, Dana. Ha ha ha! You like the TSAs? Let's find it. Yeah, that's a state secret. I stick a rag in my mouth. I was thinking about being a uh, Fukushima um, consultant for people. And, and I charge 5,000 bucks, you gotta come and sit down with me. And I educate you. 
puts you on the right track. Yeah? And I've worked it out. A friend of mine actually worked it out. He said, all I had to do was sit there and go, run! Every time, so, <laughs> thank you, come again. Run! Just do that every, for an hour till he ran away. I don't think they would ask for the money back because they'd be like, what, what the hell? I check some balance. How's it going, bud? Hi, Cat's Alive one. Hi, Tracy. Mackie. Make is looking. John. Florida. Steven. Yeah, I don't apologize. I, I, I don't really, when I apologize, I don't actually mean it. How about that? Checks and balance. How's that work for you? <laughs> yes, I got a mad professor look. Thank you. I hope you're talking because I like that one. Hi, Aaron. Oh, I woke up early. Right? Well, I wasn't really sleeping. And after I started going off on the ice cream, that's, I don't think I'll sleep till tomorrow after that ride. Oh, man. Definitely a trip and a half. Always works, though. Better than water in your face any day. After, right? After the ice cream. Freak out, goes away. Makes you feel alive. It's like eating jalapenos that you shouldn't have ate, you know? That you weren't prepared for because no one warned you. That kind of headache. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It ain't Al Qaeda, it's the OSS and the CIA. Hi, passing through. Hi, Starlight. Hi, Aaron. And Albert. What to do to my head? Yeah, it was pretty rough there, man. It was pretty rough. I was swinging it around like a rock star. That's what happened. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let me see. Hi, Sergeant. Mickey. From Tennessee. Ah, uh, you poor ting boy. You can apologize later, okay? Apologize right now, actually. I want to... Apologize for being from Tennessee. I'm not doing nothing to you. Apologize for being from Tennessee. I'm just kidding you. That's actually really rude. But hey, that's how I roll. Because you're over there, I'm over here. And not like you're going to sue me. Well, you might take my channel away from me. You can see up to now. Aha! I got Dana's channel. I sued him. You never even showed up. How long will the melted cores, Omatus? How long will the melted cores be at? I'm just laughing, this gallows. At 7,000 degrees or more? I'd be happy if it goes down to 7,000 degrees in the next thousand years. These things can turn on and off too. It's cause just because it turned off don't mean some other metals land on it, it won't flip back on again. Uh, but these, even when it's flipped off, these temperatures are just over the top. <coughs> It's a, it's a really complicated one because we don't got no precedence uh, that's open public access for everybody to shift to. Uh, ob this type, see? There's no way to record it. We got some examples that we can always play by. Uh, you know, Fukushima ain't going, or um, Chernobyl ain't going anywhere. And there's a documentary down below. But then you, when, you, you know, when you're looking at how they always want to come out and downplay it by saying it's CCM-137. So a lot of people are stuck, including me, get stuck in that little paradigm where you can't get away from saying that. And you say it by, uh, because you, it hits you for so many angles. You get lulled right into that. And that's why you hear me constantly. And I just stick with the heavy ones. I don't go down the long, long list of the thousands of isotopes that's actually out there. Because this is the weapon noise, the MOX fuel in particular, see? Just got no, who cares about the other reactors? Fuck them. We're worried about the MOX. Not worried about it. We understand the MOX fuel is a better way of putting it. More worried about it is an understatement. And not to be over indulging tonight in my cursing, but that's not normal. To your question was uh, 7,000 degree to 9,000 degree, whatever. That could go on for millenniums. And there's three of them down there. And the MOX fuel, there's no precedence for that because that's, that concoction is probably the first time they ever tried it, see? And then they were using lasers to enhance all of this stuff. And they took all the warheads from Russia and America, they, allegedly, and then they melted these, you know, they, that's the way you're looking at it with lasers is they compressed it and compacted it. And they, first they extracted it. 
And then they put in a combination that physics suggests, right? There's just one big constant. They're looking, and they're probably doing all of that just to uh, for an equation, right? It had no, it has no purpose outside of an equation. And if that, and it might not even prove the equation, but prove that the equation is valid, and then they'll make some other mad, insane concoction because they prove one equation. And this is how they got their way all the way up through all these different concoctions to the point where uh, number three might never stop certainly you know tens of thousands of years wouldn't be surprising you can't go down there and dig it up and, like they're claiming right what the hell are you gonna put it in again oh I'm sorry you can't put it in anything only the core of the earth itself because um, it would assimilate into that and so we were supposed to never touch it again after Chernobyl. We were supposed to decommission, but they haven't decommissioned a bloody plant on the planet. They can't. And every plant by proxy is a nuclear waste site anyway, until the end of time. And then they try to come out and pretend that they can do the glassification, is what I call it. And this is where they take uh, yellow cake and put it in glass and cool it down. And so that way it doesn't leach a little bit. They don't know 100%. But so when you build these facilities, you can never get in there and fix anything either, see? And so the first time they have a breakdown, that's the end of that plant. Now you can never get in that plant and do anything because, and if anybody does, um, you know, you can't fool yourself with how deadly this stuff actually is, just proximity-wise. Just in, uh, you know, just being on the same planet with it is an issue. It shouldn't be on the planet. You can't. You can't, I mean, TEPCO is claiming they can strain all kinds of stuff out of the water and use these sophisticated caves. But if you keep reading, you find out it's just, it's just a big experiment. And it, what are they going to do with all that stuff that they manages to, to trap? So if there was heavy metal particulates come down, yeah, they should be able to catch that, right? But all of these devices immediately can't be used again. No one should be allowed to go near those things again. It's like the plane I was talking about yesterday, how it flew through the plumes here in British Columbia nine days after those massive counts. And that plane was radioactive. Right? Go look up the 50s and the 60s footage that's all over the Internet now, and they talk about all of that stuff and how these planes are hopelessly contaminated till the end of time. And, but, I mean, they, they went ahead and destroyed a lot of this stuff and made bumpers out of it and frying pans that they use on Navy ships, right? That's what kind of creatures we're living with on the planet. They'll do anything for a buck. Yeah, and cow, and Miss Milky's there saying cows eat radioactive fallout and then make the milk, right? And, I mean, that's, you don't need, you can understand how big of an impact that is. And how do you get away from that, see? You can't. Never let the cows outdoors again. And then it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and our government is complicit now because it didn't warn people. It doesn't try to mitigate it for people. It doesn't hand out iodine tablets and explain to them what's going on. It doesn't reevaluate its long term plans anymore. It removed. You know, they cut down on all this testing, but we see they went out and actually tested here in Canada. And we know the Americans are doing it. We know Vietnam done it. We know Hawaii is doing it. We know all the Pacific uh, countries that are going to be destroyed totally, but are now being inundated with radioactive, not only tsunami debris. It's just incredible how much came out of that country, tsunami debris and all along that coastline. It wasn't just like a nice, small, isolated tsunami, folks. It, it extracted so much, so much misery, so heartbreaking to even think about it, you know, that people, that that actually happened. It's inconceivable, but, you know, in that sense, because we know it has to happen at some point throughout history. A mountain could break off, slide in the ocean, and you get these localized tsunamis, right? Um... I lost track anyway. Let me come say hi. I want to be too live. Want to be 24 live? 24 live? MT Paul. 
That was uh, Miss Milky's comment. You're replying to it, Bess. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, da, da, da. How to deal with a soul, soul. Almond milk. Almond milk is really good stuff, folks. Yeah. Tanks, cats alive one. Uh, I know Nuber Magic sure somewhere. He's got another video today, folks. You might want to check after. Miss Milky popped up another one last night, right after this. And right here in this, so it was great to be able to watch that right after. That was pretty cool. Um, Kevin Blanche has been ha hammering away. And Thomas Ackerman. Man, he's pretty funny. He's serious, don't get me wrong, but I need somewhere to go to, right? To blow off. See some of the old snap. Which is great. Patrick Penny, he snaps a lot. He, he tore into the well, he tore into all of us, I guess, because he has a, a strong sense of urgency, and he's worried, I guess. And I, I look past that stuff because I understand how frustrating it can be, right? Not uh, to put so much time and energy and effort and everything and not have anybody recognize it. And so that's an important one, too, is that Patrick Henry, which is not his name, but that's the name he's going by, the link's below. And so he'll link you up with all the the email gate, the plume gate, what's known as plume gate. And you know all these water gates and climate gate and Wikile Wikipedia gate and WikiLeaks gate and all that stuff. Well, there's actually a uh, Fukushima uh, gate, and that's back and forth between the nuclear uh, regulatory agencies, um, different you know, a lot of different players, well, all, all the players that were out there and a lot that are still popular are tied up into that. And so if you're looking, if like, um, I know Sylvia had written a comment at the beginning before it came online. Hi, Mama Nock. Um, Sylvia had said she was writing articles in Quebec and was frustrated about that. And so you can go into that plume gate um, emails and flush out some real tibbets, some heavy duty tibbets, if, that's, if that makes you tick, right? And a lot of people, you know, you need a few thousand, hundred thousand people diving on that anyway to flush it out because there's so much. And that has to be flushed out, right? That has to be flushed out. But we have to uh, also warn this planet of um, of something so bizarre as a dead Pacific in two years and the implications of what that actually means. And that's just the beginning. And that's not... See, and that's the problem that everybody kind of can't wrap their mind around. And I have to keep saying it for everybody to make sure anybody that's new and have those has those narratives and, and they can wrap their minds around it. And so these uh, these sessions of an hour... Um, are meant to be able to flex back and forth between the same songs uh, sometimes that you've got to keep out there in order to keep the narrative strong and get everybody acclimatized to at least something they got in response that's solid, right? That's what we need more than anything else is the narratives that are really strong for bludgeoning, I shouldn't say that, for rationalizing, which... Um, Anybody, include, in particular your loved ones and your relatives and your friends, because that's where most people now are running into the issues, their personal lives. And also with their own demons, uh, because that's important too. And that people have to learn to have closure with the knowledge and then have power with that knowledge and resolution. In other words, you have to get away from the GMO and eat uh, only organic foods. And you have to learn to go out and find your own organic foods and take advantage of that and build up a reserve in your body. And you have to learn to not like cleanse, not tense your body up because you use up a lot of oxygen when you do that. And you don't have a reflex anymore if you're tense. And that reflex is very important um, in your personal life, in, in everything you do. And that sense of purpose is so important in your personal life and in everything that you do. And your purpose 
is to become knowledgeable, because that's what you're seeking and now, is to become knowledgeable and then share that knowledge. And so that's only something that you can ultimately um, do, and that you're everybody is certainly a hundred thousand times capable of doing it when they set their resolves. And so like I say, everybody that comes to these videos ultimately are trying to set their resolves. And that's the path I had to go down. And then the realization for me was my resolve, even though I didn't know it that day. But I, I, I know now it's, it was my resolve where I, I, I don't want anybody else to go down that road and feel that, and I'm, right? Don't want anybody, I, I don't like the idea that other people, I should say, experiences that. And so to me, uh, the jet streams gave me some comfort because it, the way it worked, there was pockets. And so that gave me a little bit of hope. And then the way the oceans mixes, they didn't just pour into each other, and that gave me uh, that much needed hope at that point. But it was hope in the sense that this can't be real, you know. It this can't be real. It's like you're sitting in the corner, rocking, saying those words over and over. And so, how do you claw your way out of that little uh, self-imposed prison? For me, it was to go out and look at the options and see how it works. So I had to look at what radiation does. It goes all the way into the troposphere, into the stratosphere. And so then you had to look at how much was actually on the site. And so when you look at the emissions that just in the pool that they claim they're doing now number four is 1,535 rods. And I've seen headlines from a number that are saying there's around 80 rods in each of these bundles. See how that works, right? First you say it's 1,535 rods, but then you find out it's 1,535 bundles and that in each bundle there's 80 rods. So that's like 122,000 rods. Yeah, what was that? 122,000, Dana? Yeah, that's right. In that one little pool. Yeah. Was that all the pools they had, Dana? Oh, no, no. I think there was more than one in that building. <laughs> so there's more than one in that building. There's like three or four. Well, that's a lot of rods. And then there was unit one, two, and three. Had just as many pools, just as many rods. And so now we're talking about a significantly huge number of rods. Not, right? Because bundles were 80 rods, 12 feet long. And each rod is consisting of pellets of uranium and allegedly uh, plutonium. But in order to get something up to two million times more deadly than any other reaction uh, reactor on the planet, two million times more deadlier than any other reactor on the planet, and the MOX field is a bigger reactor than any other reactors out there, and it's at least, say, four times bigger than the Chernobyl 30% meltdown in that little tiny reactor with the graphite. So you're looking at 18 to 20 million times more deadly and with that toxins flowing out into the ocean. Because the cores, three cores are melted down. So we're not even talking about the other two cores that are melted down. We're not talking about the big bang over and all the zirconium that's missing, right? That don't go into the equation. And then we never hear them talking about how much, uh, they always say cesium-137, but what about the uranium-235, 234, and what about the plutonium and its entire family tree, and what about the strontium and the entire family tree, and what about the military concoctions of the 1300 long-life uh, weaponized isotopes? And then what about <coughs> the atomization of hundreds of thousands of these rods? Remember that right now that, that one pool has got 122,000 roughly rods into it. Finally, we're getting these numbers. And so that would mean there's a million and something rods there. Right? And because they were processing on that site, there's a hell of a lot of uranium-238 on that site too. Right? And because they have imported a lot of the MOX fuel from America and other countries, right, from the signatory uh, nations, into Fukushima, which is just their little, uh, that's all the country's little personal country to go down and party with mox fuel and make these concoctions and if it all goes wrong, well, that's their problem, right? Uh, as long as you get their equation 
Yeah, no, I'm still talking. Hang on. I was talking a long time that time. Not bad. 34 minutes. Pfft. I could do that with a hangover. Not that I drink, but I could, I bet you. I always wanted to go for 47 minutes this time, but maybe next time, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. I'll get that, though, where I don't shut up for 47 minutes. Uh, aye, 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 me, 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 aye, aye, aye. iPhone, iPad, iPad, aye, 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 right? <laughs> People who are all, oh, I got cold shivers. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Albert. Hi, Lunar. Hi, Ketzer K. Carol B. Checks and balance, Albert. Just passing through. Rad Chad. As, yeah, some people were asking last night about the dandelion in New York City and San Francisco and outside the city or whatever. If you can find a spot where you don't think it was overdone with uh, pesticides, I go for it. At least you're getting some nutrition in your body. Uh, but then again, you can also go... You know, somebody can make a fortune right now selling dandelion. Dandelion popsicles and dandelion uh, Kool-Aid and dandelion uh, wine. Man, that stuff is... Oh, there's nothing better than dandelion wine, folks. If, you, if you've never experienced dandelion wine, it's incredible to wine. Thanks, Third Watch. <laughs> I'll perform like a uh, wind-up cheap. Nickel toy. Even if I got nothing to say, I'll just pretend. I'll do that for the whole hour. Rather not show up. I'll cut off my ear and I'll sit here and let it bleed for a whole hour. Rather not. If I got nothing to say. Okay. I'll do that when I get some good uh, computer equipment and CGI stuff. There, uh, yeah, did you see? There's two two documentaries on Journeyman Pictures. They come out and gave Japan a couple of elbows and knees in the side of the head today with a couple of uh, decent documentaries. Oh, well, one was a good documentary. And, um, bloop, bloop, bloop. Then I go into meltdown. I watched so much. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Fukushima. No, 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 no. Chernobyl. Watching it all. Oh, that's what happened. <coughs> Unit 731. I'm probably wrong. I have a little nasty throat. Unit 731 in 1944. And they allegedly killed tens of thousands of prisoners. And used to cut them open when they were alive just to watch the progress of these biological chemical weapons. And the documentary's up in Journeyman Pictures. You can go watch it on YouTube for free. It's like 20 minutes, I think it was, or 25. It's well put together, though. I've watched a lot of that on that. And then there was the raping of Nick King, was it, I think? I actually read a translation of that. And they were saying in the movie, or in that video, that there was this other lady wrote the first English translation. But I read about that a long time ago. And I would love to remember what that book was. So there is another English translation out there of that. That's that it matters. <laughs> because that's a story that is frightening. Rape is a weapon. We see that all the time, of course. But that that's pretty... Uh, the people that were involved in that, and the people in 731... Are, were moved into universities and uh, media and government uh, regurgitators, spokespersons, right, to cover their own tracks. And then a lot of these crazies that were doing all this and ordered all that, their offsprings are in the system controlling a lot of it now, and Fukushima included. And so psychopaths truly are... Uh, there. And so, in order to make them feel better about themselves, you bring in the Yakuzus, right? And say, well, at least we're not as bad as Yakuzus. And that's how they live with themselves every day. That's how they justify the things they do. And the fact that they're killing this planet at an ac accelerated rate 
Because every day that a leech is in there without nobody else even trying to stop it is a genocidal day. It's a genocidal day. Every five days, it's a holocaust worth of cancer uh, coming to this planet. Millions and millions of people. Every, you know, a day is probably going to end up with cancer for every day that is leeching in within the next four and five years because this stuff is so toxic. We've seen what the report I've done last night and the Canadians went out there and flew at 750 feet and they found radiation. The entire coastline was airborne non-stop nine days later and it didn't stop. See? Well, I guess it stopped now, I suppose, but still releasing it into the environment. You got all these gases coming up at it into those fake buildings that they got there. How the hell are they up on that page? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and E&E News, folks. Some amazing headlines. Go and read that for a whole day. Just keep reading. Just keep reading through. Just clicking away. There's all kinds of links everywhere. Just keep clicking away, clicking away, reading it. Just read it to a friend. Read it to a family member. And then you can link over to the mainstream media. Right? And you do that a few times. And they won't ask you to do that anymore. Just keep reading all these headlines day in, day out to them. Won't take you long to wrap their minds around it, okay? Won't take them long to smarten up, get their act together. Because you can bludgeon somebody in a matter of 10 minutes. Just do it nice. Just do it nice. Here, I'll give you an example. Hang on. Strap yourselves in and hang on is more like it, because... <laughs> one of my favorite techniques, you know? Sit there with my smartphone. So, you don't believe in Fukushima, do you? You're probably not going to talk to me for a couple of days after I go. So... I'm on E and E News right now. I A E A, big shot, big shot, right? He got those like Gucci underwear on underneath all that stuff he got there. He probably his socks were probably five hundred dollars apart up here, a piece. So what they're considering doing is putting all the toxic Fukushima water in the ocean. Well, yeah, you know, can't blame them. Can't freaking blame them, because the pony show is over. And they can't keep it there. And what happens if we have an earthquake, a massive earthquake, another tsunami come through there? You're not getting back on that site ever. Period. And that, you know, pfft, what the hell are you supposed to say? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say, right? Yeah, you can go ahead and dump it in the ocean if you let the international community come in there and fucking get to work on it. How about that one? Yeah? That's a pretty good idea, you ask me. Because you're going to have to do it anyway. Right? You have an earthquake, man. You can't get back on that site. We're screwed. The only hope we got is we can do something. We can try something. At least we got some hope. And we won't give it up. We won't stop. We'll keep developing technology, giving a chance, giving an opportunity. If we're the planet is tall. And there was a big meteorite coming at you. You'd all get it right quick. I wouldn't have to make these videos, okay? Nobody would. Because <laughs> everybody would be, somebody please make a video. Because <laughs> I want somebody else to say they see a big meteorite coming at us. What would you do if you looked in your TV tomorrow morning and they said a big meteorite is going to come and going to kill us? we got two years. Would you say, oh, well, two years. Let's go. That's all you can do, boy. Or would you say... You know, thank goodness the media went down there and the professor at the, all the universities are saying they're all going to go to work right away. And all the moms and pas are they're packing their children lunches and education is free now. And the world is working as one to solve something that will exterminate this planet. They think they can go into these bunkers and hide away if something like that comes, is coming, right? We'll dig you out. Millions of us will take our shovels, our little itty bitty shovels from Walmart and Canadian Dart and everywhere else, and we'll come dig out of your bloody bunkers. There's nowhere safe for you. We'll weld your air vents tight. We're going to weld your doors tight. So you can't never get out and you'll suffocate. Because the world is not going to sit here and watch their annihilation just because uh, the aristocrats think that. 
Uh, 65,000 TSA can control 300 million handguns. 65,000 TSA couldn't get a job at Walmart. They've got a pen in 300 million Americans plus that got handguns. Not mention the long guns and the automatics and the unregistered stuff. TSA ain't going to do jack shit. Jack shit. Period. If that country goes off down there. But you run it, you run out of the shooting and the killing, and that kind of wears off there for a week or two, and everybody wants to get back to the old shit, right? Well, the problem with the nuclear fallout, nonstop, nonstop, is all the land is already poisoned here in British Columbia. Everything is poisoned in British Columbia and most of uh, Western Canada, minimum, and most of the northern hemisphere is already hammered and is on, should never be living here because they didn't even try. They didn't even try to find out where the big batches were going to land. But we seen that in what I showed you last night, right? In that Canadian study nine days after Fukushima where they took samples every 15 minutes to 750 feet. You seen what that meant, see? That was really amazing high particulates and that's because where they lie to you so much. I've seen reports where they said, oh, there's only 30,000 rods on the site. Look, you know, if each pool's got around 122,000 rods in it. If there's 80 in a bundle, and there's 1,535 bundles, and there's more than one pool in each of those buildings, well, there was. No one knows where to tow. We, we assume most of that got atomized and blown all over the neighborhood for up to two miles away, particulates. Big pieces were found. But we know the typhoons have whipped up a lot of this heavy particulate that was everywhere and still continues to hemorrhage everywhere on that site. The site is full of rods where a piece this big, if it was in the room, I couldn't finish that sentence. And it'll be like that because it's plutonium and uranium for a billion years. And then you get the homeless to go in there and kill them, radiating your graveyards at the same time. Weeks later when they get out with $15 an hour for... Look at that Chernobyl video below where people were only allowed 15 to 20 seconds on the roof. The homeless are being put in that environment day after day after day after day after day. But if you get the right exposure, because there's so much yellow cake on that, we know that the 238 uranium will make you break out in sores, make you debilitate it within three days. And so we heard a lot of the factual stories coming out where people were held in that site. Well, that's because they were so sick. And if they had to die, they would have just buried them there. It's a nuclear waste dump. And most of these people, when they die, that's where they should be buried anyway. Certainly not in your graveyards. And like you say, they're, they're, it's radiated pee that these victims are emitting from themselves. And just the whole country, all of Japan, is finished. The Philippines is finished. It's destroyed. It it's, it's don't exist anymore. I got, see, I just done that and I got distracted that fast. Sorry. I'll come back over. We'll jump on the comments. And we'll spend some minutes here. 48 minutes. We'll wind it down now. We'll say hi. Uh, I just, some good stuff there last night, by the way, folks, in the comment section. Thank you. There's lots of good conversations there. I like that stuff, right? I like seeing people interacting with each other. And because there's little these little tidbits, and that means something after I read it a few times. A lot of the times. And so we got uh, Laurel Adams. And Mark T says, even all cats alive, why don't we go over and cover the entire country? I mean, Fukushima with cement. Because you got a big problem. You got three 100% melted cores, and then you got all that water down there, right? And then you got the melted cores are so hot because they didn't get the seeing Chernobyl, they were able to turn it off, right? They had a partial meltdown. They got three 100% meltdowns. And so all you're doing is putting a band aid, uh, say, if you got a big wound on your shoulder, right? Big gouge where a vampire come by and took a big chunk out of your shoulder and someone put a band-aid on your little toe that's that's what you're doing with uh, cover 
Yeah, we need a cover over to stop those plumes coming up, but because there's so much heat, it's just going to force itself up through the earth all over the place there. And so what you're saying is cement the whole place is still the issue. You've got to get and deal with whatever's down there, and you've got to find a solution to stop it from hemorrhaging into the ocean. But it's going to become so hot immediately as you do that, right? Because that's the only reason it's staying cool is because it's getting floated, uh, flooded out into the ocean. And so by building that, that ice wall, for instance, you were going to trap all that water coming down the mountain behind it that's heating up to inconceivable temperatures, and that will just, uh, the site, you won't even be able to get on the site again. And the big problem is you want to be able to get on the site, and you've got to deal with all that. And you've got to try to minimize every bloody rod that you can that's hanging off the edge. Uh, I'll lower my voice. Let me bring up a picture. So there's rods all over the edge of that. I forgot to check to see what I've done to you folks tonight. Right, there's a, that's where the pools, each of those pools that's missing there had 122,000 rods, and that's a quarter million rods, see? And there's four of these buildings anyway. Um, let me show you something. Hey, Zoe. I hear you. That place is full of rods. That's number four. Right, you can't get in there, because if there was one rod there, you couldn't get in there. There's thousands of rods, and thousands, tens of thousands of rods all over that place. And that's a huge issue, isn't it? You can't get in there. Chernobyl was lucky because it had a partial meltdown. It was only one-third the size of any of them. It didn't have the pools involved in it. And they got it under control shortly after, right? It was just a short, one big plume that came out of it, basically, for a period of time. Then it stopped. Fukushima's been at it every day, out of control. It's gone to the whole site, the entire site. There's nowhere safe at all to stand on that site. You need 1,300 Geiger counters that are calibrated to each of the, each of the, geyser, uh, the isotopes in order to even have an, a rough idea. But you got to catch these particles, the gammas, as they're airborne if you ingest them. Uh, and the way to sequester in your body so readily, you can't even detect it. And there was so much coming at us nine days after that the planes failed to find anywhere where there wasn't the plume at 750 feet, which means it was, right? If it was at 750 feet, it encompassed all that entire area. So all the children walking to school that morning walked through those plumes all day, right? And from 6 o'clock that morning, 12 o'clock that afternoon, from the day before they started at 6 o'clock, so it was 18 hours altogether, but that was a period where everybody was walking to school. All the children, all the people heading to work, walking out to their vehicles, walking out to their cars. We'll all end up now, for sure, with cancers that were exposed to that kind of uh, a plume. That was a radioactive nuclear folly. Like Jerry Cole in the second episode, where everybody got into the mine and they blew the front of the mine so the rain couldn't get down there because the rain liberated it. Well, we didn't need that this time because it was the air was so thick. It was already it was a, it was truly a plume because there's so much and it was atomized on top of these melted cores that were 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, right? You can't drop anything down there without it going poof, 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 as quick as you can throw shit down there. Poof, 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 and so all the rods were falling down. And every time you have an earthquake, more rods fall down there. And so we can't deny that no more. We can't hide away from that anyway, period, ever. And, we, and we're not going to. We want 4,200 peer-reviewed academic studies that are published every day flipped to deal with this. And we've got to keep that going for at least 100 years until somebody's kid is inspired to create something to zap it all away. Right? Wouldn't that be fun? Or we can build a whole bunch of chummies and... Yell out in the space, shit, to the top of our lungs. And maybe the aliens go, oh, Jesus, somebody said shit. We better go rescue them. We better go rescue them. Can't rescue everybody, folks. I've been on the ocean most of my life, and I know that. That's something you can't do, unfortunately. But do the best you can, right? Try the best you can. And then you know you tried. And, like, take your cell phone, your smartphone, Go to E&E &E News and just start reading the headlines, right? Just cruise through the headlines for 20 minutes straight, half an hour straight or something like that. Record that and send that off to somebody. 
Thanks, Sergeant. We're down to the last few moments here, folks. I'm going to come say hi to everybody. 54 minutes, a little short, but that's okay. And it will finish out that bowl of ice cream where the TSA comes and gets it on me, sticks their naughty little fingers in it or something. Hi, Bob. Hi, Ninth Wave. Just passing through. Hi, Sergeant York. Thank you. Sylvia, thank you. I seen your comments there when you showed up originally. I hear you. Miss Milky, Nuber Magic. I got lots of people under my video here, folks, if you're looking for more people. Hi, Eric. Hi, Lunar. Uh, Steven, Mayan, Ketzer K, Cucumber, Tyson. Yeah, I'll do some remote viewing for Tyson. Wait, wait. Miss Milky is saying wave. Oh, I'm waving, Miss Milky. I'm waving. Yeah. Pretty good. Plan B, yell shit. There you go, Miss Milky. <laughs> it's funny how you're the very first comment I see when I turn around. That's priceless. Checks and balances. Hey, bud. Horton, here's a who. <laughs> Third watch. Sergeant York, 54 minutes in. That's That was fast, I know. Hi, AV8. Navigate 8. Navigate. I always use an 8 at the end of it for some reason, even though I know it's what's supposed to be one syllable. Another great show. Thank you. Thank you. Another great comment. You put lots of great comments there. Um, L-I-R-A-N. Ranarol. Ranarol. Arrol. That's a hard one. Why can't I pronounce that one? Anyway, they put a lot of great comments on these videos lately, I notice. Lyanna Ranarill. 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 Lie Ranarill. Lie Ranarill. Lie Ranarill. Lie Ranarill. Lie Ranarill. See, it sounds, that actually sounds okay. Yeah, you left lots of good comments. I've read them. I know uh, Donna leaves lots of comments on my videos after the next day. And Denise, uh, a number of people. I never mention them. And I should... Take a screen capture and do that probably next time. Hi, Starlight. Make is looking. Carrie uh, B. Eric. Nuber Magic. Hey, buddy. I like your video today. That was awesome. Um, and Propia, too, man. That's some good stuff you got there. That's what I mean, folks. Like, right? Everybody does is different. Miss Milky's giving you a different. Nuber Magic's giving you different the collectives, right? They both give you a collective of their history. You know, every time they're making a video, they think about that. Mama Knox is always out there. It's been out there for quite a while. Is relentless herself. Uh, Big Now TV, I usually miss you. Sorry, man. I see you, though. I see your comments. I read all your folks' comments after. Miss Milky's giggling. Cause I remote viewer. <laughs> She's a wave again. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, folks, thank you. Um, thank you, Laurel, Tyson, Stephen, Starlight, Albert, Israel. I know, folks, you're sharing it. Thank you. And uh, that's well, I can see that in my videos lately. You are. There's no doubt about it. Because that, that's the only way the video is getting out there if people share it. And remember, there's only 2 billion people on the net, right? The other 5 billion will never hear this narrative. And so by trying to share it and trying to explain to people, you'd be surprised of um, how important that can be too, right? Because that's what you're, you are, your knowledge. Thanks, Gary B. Mickey, yeah, I like the ice cream story because it's a true story. It's, i done that. Make no mistake about it. I'm not making it up. Just like I'm going to eat it after so the TSA might show up and be mad at me because I, well... They can only read directions on pizza boxes anyway, so it don't really matter. Hi, Sylvia. You good night. Bob Smith, Aaron. Uh, once again, Mom and Ox, thank you. Uh, Maya, Chair, Sergeant Tyson, just passing through. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, Eric Middleton, Kerry B., Charles Hudson. I can't keep up with it. Every time someone comments, I get booted down, but I'm getting pretty good at that because I, I try to hold on to it. So uh, I thought it was a good one tonight. Had a bit of fun. Had a bit of fun. Try to lighten the load a little tiny bit, uh, but still get some pertinent stuff in there. 
make some fun of TSA. That's never a wasted adventure. Because it's impossible not to have a few good yuck yucks, you know, when you're talking about the TSA. How do you save a uh, TSA agent from drowning? You throw him like a five-year-old, and his hands are going everywhere, and when he gets close to shore, just separate him, right? And you saved yourself a life. It's a good thing. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. And um, tomorrow is day 1,000. Nubru Magic's got 999. So see you tomorrow, folks.